Hello my friends, today something about T34. For several years before my YouTube channel was launched, I built huge amount of models based on T34 chassis and it was a lot of work. All of them were published in different modeling magazines and I would like to tell you about them in this video. I can say that there are several reasons that I decided to make this film. First of all, I think I have something to be proud of. Secondly, it would be a good break among regular movies about typical modeling subjects. Third, hmm, editing this movie was easier than building a new model. You know, sometimes I need to rest. It will be rather a presentation of ready-made models and some pictures from construction stage and not a standard movie that I always show on Mondays, so completely relaxing. And of course I have a little giveaway for you today. Drinks up and let's go! Needless to say how popular the T-34 is among modelers around the world. For me, next to the Panther it's the coolest tank from a modeling point of view. In my country it's especially famous for the series that has been broadcast on TV dozens of times, where the main characters fight using the T-34-85 version. Poles probably know what I'm talking about. For others, it's probably the most characteristic vehicle of the Eastern Front, which is not surprising given the content of newsreels from that time. For the beginning, a model that is one of my favorites. I can say that it's my showpiece and overall it's very close to the ideal one. Generally, I don't spend time looking at my models because there are too many of them waiting in line to be made, but this one is special. I like to watch it from time to time because every square centimeter is refined here. I can say that I love all this controlled mass and special equipment. All elements of the stowage give a unique character and the worst of all is that I don't have this model. But I think the collector is satisfied with such a gem. This is Italeri kit of T3485 which I received just as some kind of the gift with no specific plan about it. It was another box with plastic in my workbench. But after a couple weeks I decided to make something unique with it. Not just another green tongue, but enriched with some gold and with some special painting which would be perfect to catch the eye of the viewer for a couple seconds longer. I also decided to make it with Thomas Schurzen set, the same which was used by Adam Wilder on his DVD. Truly speaking, I was partly inspired by this publication, but I didn't want to copy his marvelous work. In addition, I planned to add some shields on the turret as I saw them in the references pictures. To keep the level of details, I also added the metal trucks from Master Club and copper towing cables from Eureka XXL. There are also metal fenders which are dedicated to Tamiya kits, but I managed to fit them to Italeri with no problems. The resin is also present in quite huge amount. Panzer art turret with metal gun barrel and the set of resin wheels which represent parts from Panther tank. From Pitts Creek I received the metal boxes to add on the fenders. In the end I decided to add something unique. The incomplete mine plow which comes from old Zvezda kit. It changes the shape of the model meaningly. In my opinion it was a good step in designing of the final layout of the model. Already during the completing of the parts my idea of the painting and weathering of the skid became clear and I had no doubts that it should be finished as a Berliner street warrior with signs of earlier fighting. Connected with damaged tram and figures this model built a really impressive diorama. Dragon Models prepared a set of probably one existed vehicle which was served in 653 Schwere Panzerjager Abteilung. It's a field modification with extra armor shields around the Flagwirung 38 station. I found couple pictures of this one from different stages of preparation. Two of them are described as the preparation of the conversion into Flag Panzer with some soldiers from repair unit. One shows the tank after adding the flak turret but without the ammunition racks on the sides. The another taken from the rear is quite overexposed so details of the rear part of the vehicle are impossible to analyze. The best known are two shots with and without crew. It's very easy to find them on Beutepanzer website. 
After a carefully analyzing of those pictures we can say that the tank was probably abandoned but not destroyed or broken. Defenders are on their place with no battle worn marks the same as the main body. The question is what happened with the turret? Was it just thrown away as the flak was more needed by the unit than another tank? Or maybe it was some kind of ammunition carrier or medical field ambulance? Who knows? In matter of painting it looks like new applied standard Gemma camo scheme with yellow sand as the base and some brown and green blocks. The Barking Kreutz is also visible in the one of the pictures I mentioned above. The kit is mainly built straight from the box in contrast to the previous one. I changed only the flag barrels, added the towing cables and prepared more ammo boxes because we can find only 4 pieces of them in the set. So I asked my friend to make some copies for me and now the tank is fully equipped with ammunition. Despite the fact that the pictures don't show any storage on this tank, I decided to add couple minor additions to bring more life to the model. This is why I added some tarps, wires and chain to it. The painting was finished in typical German camo but the lower part of the hull stayed in Russian green. Um, you know, Russian green is not the same as Russian green. What is interesting, I painted the flag gun partially, which means that I covered it with yellow paint only in the areas which are easy to paint with airbrush, leaving the rest in panzer grey color. I wanted to show the laziness of the crew member with a paint gun who wouldn't be precise and sprayed only the most accessible places. The letters SU come from Russian designation Samokodnaya Ustanovka and number 122 depicts the caliber of the main armament. The chassis was taken from T-34 tank, of course. The first vehicles were produced in December 1942 and sent to the new combat units where mixed regiments consist of two batteries with SU-122 and four batteries with SU-76M. Those units saw the combat for the first time in Smyrny region on the Volkov front near Leningrad. After this experience it was decided to set the units between 400 and 600 meters behind the attacking tanks. Sometimes the distance was shortened but it depends of the battle situation. The use of SU-76 and SU-122 together was unsuccessful. The unit organization was changed and finally the separate regiments were created for those vehicles. This organization remained in place until the beginning of 44 when SU-122 started to be replaced by heavy self-propelled guns and tank destroyers. They proved their role in direct fire on strongholds. They were also effective in direct shot to blow off the turret of German tank, but it couldn't be used as a normal anti-tank role due to the properties it was designed. Few howitzers survived the war. Currently only one is extant and is on display in the Kubinka Tank Museum. The kit is very good itself and there is no need to make any improvements, but I wouldn't be myself if I didn't change a few things. The gun barrel, trucks, but I think the plastic are as good as the rest of the model, towing cables and antenna rod. From the beginning I knew that my kit will be done in worn winter camo the same as we can see on the box art. I like the red markings on the sides and the big circle on the crew compartment which perfectly break the core of the winter wash, so I left the historical correctness in the packet and decided to focus on the unique look of my kit. To complete the final appearance I started to collect some additional stuff to put them on the back of the vehicle. Next to the standard ones I reminded myself that earlier in some real war pictures I saw the unusual cargo, the military motorcycle, so I wanted to add one for my kit. It wasn't an easy task to find a good one, but I managed to accomplish the mission with Vulcan's scale model Zindab K500. It was the biggest addition and the most challenging task in this part of finishing of the kit. As I remember, this little kit wasn't easy to build because of its small and complicated design, but the effect is really worth the effort. To have more options to set the good looking and realistic storage I completed and painted more than I needed. It always works. The last element of the kit was the figure of the Russian tanker. 
For this I used the Evolution Miniatures Resin 1 which perfectly fit the winter appearance of the kit. I painted it with the acrylics and just put into the hatch. It can be removed and turned left or right. This one was a true turning point in my modeling career. Many things changed during building this kit and after it was finished. As far as I remember it was a great challenge to complete this version. Yeah, about 10 years ago. Now I'm looking at this model and see how many techniques I changed and how many things I could make in different way right now. But it's normal I think. So to summarize the process of building the model it would be worth to mention the most characteristic elements of this tank. Road wheels of T-55, American machine gun on the turret, sandbags or rubber side shields for extra armor attached to the turret or hull, headlight cap, additional box on the right side of the vehicle and a new type of antenna. There were a lot of different types of camo applied but I decided to 4 tones one which was the most eye-catching for me. In connection with creation markings and additional stuff all turned out into very interesting model. After years I even found some copies of this one made by other modelers. It was funny to see them but I was very proud that my work was used by someone to build his model. Very motivating. Using couple seconds of free time for all new viewers and for those people who know my channel but haven't subscribed to it yet, please don't forget to do it and click this red button below. It would be nice if you could leave a like and comment and also take a look at my other videos. If you are interested in what I do you can also check my Patreon account where you will find even more interesting materials. This is the place in the net where I publish the most right now. Just for patrons I prepare reports on daily work, articles, ask for their opinion and show films earlier than on the official YouTube channel. In addition there are a few other interesting perks of being a patron but you can see for yourself. I think you won't be disappointed and you will see what other projects I do apart from those shown on YouTube. So please consider joining to this superb group and you can find the link in the description of this movie below. For those who know my channel from the beginning this model will come as no surprise. For those who have been here recently a few words of explanation because the appearance of this T-34 is probably quite unusual. It all started with the model from Border Models that I got completely by accident. First it landed somewhere on the shelf but then when I started getting ready to publish on the channel I decided that it would be the first model I will show. Firstly because the T-34 is very popular and secondly because this version is rare so it can also be interesting for modelers. Historically it was a Soviet attempt to strengthen a tank's armor by adding additional armor plates. However the photos are examples that it was a failure. It didn't work out too much because all vehicles were destroyed shortly after entering the fights so the Russians abandoned this idea. If you want to see what my work with this model looked like, check out 4 episodes concerning construction, painting, weathering and making a stand with figures.
It was one of the best self-propelled anti-tank guns of World War II and they serviced a long time after the war in Red Army units. The kit was mainly built by a friend of mine and my work was to complete it and finish with paints and other chemicals. The main body is the Dragon set upgraded with through model trucks. The Javelry was cut from Uber, the same as fenders and fuel tanks. The German look emphasized the commander's antenna rod which I computed from RB model and some PE leftovers from my stash. To close the list I need to mention about ET model ice cleats and Eureka XXL towing cable. The possibility of creating the interesting miniature minimalized the two options. Typical Soviet vehicle or captured German one. There are hundreds of pictures showing Russian vehicles but then I find only one picture of German SU-100. It was used by other modelers in the past of course, so to be more creative I decided to modify my idea and connect two ideas in one. So I wanted to paint it as a German vehicle with an old and heavily worn white winter camo and Soviet markings. On the top of this I planned to airbrush sandy stripes and German markings. So first I prepared the list where I tried to reconstruct the life of the vehicle connected with modeling aspects of painting. I divided it for two parts, Soviet and German. The result was my guide during this stage. Interesting facts that I found while preparing to work on the model. 1. The SU-100 had no machine guns on its board because the vehicles were expected to be support not to act independently, so the crew was equipped with PPS-41 submachine guns and hand grenades. 2. The most of Red Army tanks had only a radio receiver but SU-100 possessed a transmitter for two-way communication which gave about 20 km range in both directions. 3. Soviet Union Post released 3600 commemorative stamps where SU-100 was shown. It was designed as a part of 5-piece set which included other Russian tanks and I have these stamps in my collection. This kit is a part of quite a big diorama where T-60 is towed by this tank. From the modeling point of view I needed to prepare two kits which needed to be painted in typical Russian way, but the contrast between both of them must be visible from each point. T-60 was created as a dirty and mudded one when T-34 was quite lighter and in better visual condition. To realize the purpose I used the Dragon kit which perfectly fit to the scene I planned. The level of details is high and there is no need to add tons of aftermarkets, but if you like to play with PE parts you can spend your time replacing the plastic elements. In my kit I used fuel model trucks as I needed to have workable chassis to fit the kit easier on the diorama ground. There are also resin toolboxes from Beatscreek. The towing cables were replaced for perfect Eureka XXL set and the antenna rod is just a simple wire. The rest of the parts came from the box. As I love any kind of stowage packed on my models, I feel that this time it's necessary to make the same but some of the elements need to show the dynamic look. The story told on the diorama needed to create it on the kit. With the milliput I created some tarps on both sides and placed them on the mudguards. I added some straps fluttered in the wind which were perfect in building dynamic look I mentioned. Just simple paper straps glued with super glue, they did all the work. Next to the tarps I added the sort of tools and unused towing cable twisted in an unregular way. On the opposite side some wooden beams were composed with rusty chain, tidying them together and keeping on the tank. On this side I also added some tools. In the end I added the antenna rod which was banded as the real one seen in the World War II pictures. The turret was enriched with rolled blanket pressed down by the handrail. Between the open hatches I added captured MP40 as the personal guard of the commander or the loader. It's ready for use against previous owners. The commander comes from old MiG production set but I added some legs with boots to it. It was easier to position it in the hatch. The loader with bottle and cigarette and the driver were built from mini arts figures. 
They didn't need to be built more than the torso and hands because they are almost all hidden inside the kit. The resin heads were added and the figures were painted with acrylics. And for a moment you will see the final layout of the diorama where the described model was placed. For now, thanks for watching this episode. Because you are here, so I'm sure that you want to take part in draw. As you can see, today I have something extra to offer, and these are Eureka XXL towing cables, and even more that you need for one kit 3D printed quick trucks and quick wheel mask. All this to build superb looking T34 model. What do you need to do to have a chance of getting this stuff? Share this video on your social media, subscribe the channel, like this video and write a comment called Demons PL. The result will be announced on Monday. That's all for today, see you next time, cheers!